Hey everyone, my name is Tyler Shrek from Universal Rackets and today we are going to be improving your dinks. Once again, if you watch this whole video, you are going to be improving your dinks at the kitchen. We are going to be going over my top tips and my top tricks regardless of any age, any level that you are as a pickleball player. This video, once again, will improve your dinks. So the first thing that I want to go over with the dinks to make them better is to think about the purpose of of the dinks. Too many players just dink because their coach tells them to, or they dink because they see it on TV and they hear everyone saying, you gotta dink, you gotta dink, you gotta dink. Well, why do you have to dink? And to be honest with you, when you're picking up the game of pickleball, at least for myself, I thought the dinks were kind of silly. Why do I have to just hit the ball over the net into my opponent's kitchen instead of just smash the living daylights out of the ball? And here is why. Dinking neutralizes your opponent. If you want to improve your dinks regardless of your level, you have to understand the purpose of the dinks. And the purpose of the dinks, once again, is to neutralize your opponent. This mindset, guys, this will completely transform and shift your game. Now here, let me show you why, okay? Here's the thing. If I hit the ball really hard here, I don't have much court to work with. The closer I get to the kitchen, the less court I have to work with. So in order to keep that ball in, I either have to play with a ton of spin, however, it's a pickleball. I can't really generate that much spin, especially because they banned those high level paddles, or what do I have to do? I have to slow the ball down and let gravity bring the ball in. Now, if you are a high level pickleball player, or if you're playing someone with good hands, they're gonna smash that ball if you go like this, or they're gonna let the ball go. So I can't, really hit the ball hard. But what I can do is I can hit the ball into my opponent's kitchen. Now, by doing that, by hitting the ball into my opponent's kitchen, that's going to force them to what? If I have a ball in the air again, I can go down on it. If I have a ball that's low, I can't hit hard because again, it's gonna go out or I have to play slow. Watch what I have to do. I can either pop it up or I'm going to have to force myself to hit the ball back to my opponent. Once again, if I get a low ball, it's going to force me to hit up instead of me getting a high ball, which I'll be able to go down. So dinking neutralizes your opponent. Once again, if I receive a ball up here, I can go down and hit it into the court really hard. I can win the point I'm hitting an offensive shot because I'm above the net. However, if I get a low ball and it's below the net, that's going to force me to either A, hit the ball, dink the ball back, or B, try to hit a really low percentage shot at my opponent. So again, by dinking, it forces me to be neutralized. It forces me to not be able to kill the ball at your opponent. So by dinking, once again, it will force you to, or it'll force your opponents to be neutralized and not be able to hit an offensive shot. Now that we understand that, now we have to get into the proper rhythm. Rhythm is such a big part with the dinks. A lot of players, they struggle, they panic, they think, don't pop it up, don't pop it up, or oh no, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, and what happens? If you keep on saying one thing, what's going to happen? That exact thing. So instead of going here and just going, oh no, don't miss, don't miss, don't miss, think about a rhythm. A rhythm will calm your nerves, a rhythm will give you confidence, and a rhythm will help you hit a way better shot. So what do I mean by like that? that? I like to think of a pendulum motion. You go back and forth and back and forth. When I'm dinking, right, the ball is going to bounce. I'm going to hit. My opponent's going to bounce. They're going to hit. The ball is going to bounce. I'm going to hit. The opponent's ball is going to bounce. They're going to hit. If you can get into that rhythm, it's going to help you so much in pickleball. So number one, once again, is understanding the significance of the dink, and number two is understanding the concept of rhythm, allowing us to get into a rhythm to get much better. Now, the next thing that can help you instantly improve your dinks is contact. You need to make sure that your contact is out in front and away from your body. Too many players, they can't hit a good shot, they end up popping the ball up in the air, they end up missing the shot because they allow the ball to get too close to them. Every single time I dink, I wanna make contact out here. Notice my arm is extended, it is about two feet inside of the kitchen. This is where I wanna make contact, out in front and away from my body. Once I get close to here, it's going to force me to hit the ball up, lose control, or miss my shot. 
So again, you need to be out here rather than being in here. Now, how do we do that? Number one, we can make a mental effort to get the ball out in front, okay? You are never taking our paddle back. Number two, you can hit the ball earlier. And what I mean by that is if I wait for the ball to come, I'm going to get jammed. If I don't wait and I go to the ball, I'm going to be earlier and more out in front. So great saying is don't let the ball come to you, go to the ball. Once again, do not let that ball come to you, go to the ball. Now, a big thing about that is there might be some times that you might have to hit the ball out of the air. So what I mean by that is a lot of players, they can't hit a good dink because they allow these deep balls to push them back. Instead of doing that, you can lean over and hit it in the air. So what makes a good dinker and what will improve your dinks is the willingness and the confidence to take balls out of the air instead of getting jammed up. Once again, here's where I make contact every single time. Now, I don't care if the ball bounces or if the ball is in the air, this is going to be my contact point. This is huge, okay? The okay players, they adjust their shot based upon, or they adjust their contact point based upon the shot. So what I mean by that is if it's a deep ball, I'm gonna go back here. If it's a short ball, I'm going to go up here. The great players, they keep the same contact point, which is here, but they are going to either take it out of the air or they might move up or let it bounce. So you don't want to adjust your contact point. Here is where my dink is going to be. Now, I don't care if it's gonna be in the air, I'm gonna hit it in the air. If it comes to me here, and it bounces, I'm gonna hit it here. If it's up a little bit more clearly, I'm going to be moving up. So another way that you could think of it, because different tips work for different people and not one size fits all, is you do not move back. Now, once again, you do not move back. You are going to hold your ground up at the kitchen. If you want to instantly improve your dinks, you need to think that there is no resort for moving back. The only time that you move back, but we're improving our dinks now, so we're not doing it, is what? When the ball is up in the air super high, and then your opponent can kill it at you, then you can move back. But right now you can't. So you are going to stay up at the kitchen line all the time. And that is going to help you instantly improve your day. Now we are talking all about contact right now for our dinks. And I want you to think, this is the reason why players get jammed too. Maybe they're not moving back, they're staying up, but they are taking a backswing. When you and your partner or your opponent are up at the kitchen, it's a short distance. Short distance means what? Lack of time. You do not have time to take a backswing. Once again, you do not have time to take a backswing. And if you take a backswing, if you don't take a backswing or limit your backswing a little bit, it's going to instantly improve your dinks. So what I mean by that is players, the ball's coming and they're taking a giant backswing. The more of a backswing that I take, the more variables, the more time. I wanna make sure that I always keep the paddle out in front and I limit the backswing. Again, if it's a backhand, it's gonna be here. If it's a forehand, it's going to be here. If you are a visual learner, what I want you to think is that there is a wall from where the butt cap of your paddle is. So here's my wall, it's going out here, right? When I go to dink, I'm never taking it behind the wall. I'm always keeping it out in front at the wall every single time. You wanna make sure and that again, you always keep your contact down front, you keep the paddle there, you limit your backswing or you do not take a backswing. Okay, I want you to think of the dink. There's not really power that you have to hit. If you wanna hit power again, you can hit an angled dink or something. You're going to get into your legs, but for the most part, all you're doing is you are pushing it back. I like to think of a dink as a pushing motion. The ball's coming to me, I am pushing it back. Once again, the ball's going to come to me, I am going to push it back. Think of a push, don't think of a hit, because when you swing and you hit, more things can go wrong and you can pop the ball up. Now, here is an amazing tip for your dink, and this will save you so many net balls, okay? The best way to get the ball over the net is to make sure you keep your paddle tip down. Once again, if you wanna make sure that you get the balls over the net every single time, you need to make sure that you keep the tip of your paddle down. I'm telling you, it's going to help you so much. A lot of players, where they go wrong, is the ball's coming to them and their paddle is horizontal. If my paddle's horizontal, I can come down on the ball, okay? Same thing for the forehand. If my paddle's horizontal, I can come down on the ball. What I'm going to do to always ensure that my dinks are over the net is my paddle tip is always 
going to be down. Again, when I go prior to my contact, I wanna make sure that the tip of my paddle is always facing downward. By facing my paddle tip downward, that's going to ensure that my paddle face is upward. I'm going to say that again one more time. By facing my paddle tip downward, that's going to ensure my paddle tip is upward or my paddle face is upward. If my paddle face is upward, what's that going to do? That's going to ensure that I get under the ball every single time. So when you go and you hit, you need to make sure that your paddle tip is down the whole time. I like to think that I am sweeping the court, okay? If I had a longer paddle, my paddle tip would be riding the whole court. It's not here, it's not here. It is down every single time. By pointing my paddle tip down again, that's going to be able to lift the ball up and orient my paddle face to be up. So keep your paddle tip down all the time and that will help you a ton. If you're a kinetic learner, what I want you to think is that the tip of your paddle is weighted. So the moment that I drop my paddle, what's gonna happen? If this is weighted up here, it's gonna fall right down, okay? When I'm doing my swing, I am pretending that I have that weighted paddle and my paddle's automatically going to go down. Next thing that you can do to improve your dink is by eliminating different types of movements. Now, we already talked about the backswing, but now what we're going to talk about as well is our body movement. You need to keep your body calm, cool, and collected and efficient because again, there's less court to work with. You need to make sure that you're ready for the next ball. So a great thing to do is making sure that when I dink, I am always keeping my body still. Now I come from a tennis background, right? There's no question about, but what I used to do, it's kind of embarrassing, but if you look at my old videos on Pickleball with Tyler, check the link in the description, I am hitting my dinks and I am moving my whole body. What did I say? So close, you don't have time. So the moment that I'm hitting my Novak Djokovic or Nadal forehand dink, they're gonna blast the ball right at me. So what I need to do every single time is I need to make sure that I keep my body down and forward. My body again is down and forward. I like to think that I'm holding a glass of water on top of my head or I'm holding a beer on top of my head, okay? If I'm going, or we can do a pickleball right here. Watch, when I'm moving at the kitchen, let's see. Here we are, when I'm moving at the kitchen, look, ah, oh, I moved too much, here we are. So when I'm moving at the kitchen, I wanna pretend that that glass of water is on top of my head and I can balance it the whole time. What I don't wanna do is I don't wanna go like this because what would happen with the glass of water, it would fall over. If you can visualize that there is a glass of water above your head throughout your dinking, it's going to keep your body more efficient, it's gonna be keep keeping your movement more precise and you're gonna miss way less ball. So again, you wanna improve your dinks, actually put a glass of beer and if it keeps up there you can drink it or put a glass of water if you're under the age of 21 in the united states and what are you going to do you're just going to balance it the whole time that is going to eliminate the movement like i said now the next thing that you can do is by understanding patterns by understanding patterns here's how and what i mean angle creates angle the more angle that you hit in pickleball the more angle your opponent is going to hit in pickleball. Once again, the more angle that you hit in pickleball, the more angle your opponent's going to hit in pickleball. Middle neutralizes the angle. So if I ever go into the middle, I should expect a ball close to me. If I ever go out wide with my dinks, I go out here, what am I going to do? I should expect another ball out wide. So by understanding where you're hitting your shot and the effects of your shots, it's going to allow you to anticipate your opponent's next shot. And that's why when you go out on the pickleball court, you may play some people that you look at them, you're like, oh my God, I'm going to run through them. And then you go out on pickleball and you play them and they absolutely beat you. They beat you like 11-0, 11-0. You know why? The reason why is because they are able to anticipate. What makes a good dinker, what makes a good person at the kitchen is their ability to anticipate. If you can anticipate where your opponent's going to go, if you can anticipate, and we're going to get into this next, what type of shot your opponent is going to give you, it is going to help you tremendously when you're up at the kitchen. So what I mean by that is what did I say? I said, don't move back and when you get the ball close, you're gonna pop it up. That's the same exact thing for your opponent. So what makes a good dinker and what improves your dinks is being able to capitalize on opportunities. If you ever see your opponent's head go down, 
if you ever see your opponent's body go back, you should expect a pop-up. Now, if I see a pop-up, I'm going to lean in and be able to be more aggressive on the next shot. So once again, if you can anticipate your opponent's shot based upon what type of shot that you hit, it's going to help you a ton. Now, the next thing I'm going to tell you, and this kind of goes back to rhythm, but it's going to help you a ton, is placement over power. Placement over power. Placement over power. Waiting for the next opportunity. Dinking is to create an opportunity, okay? You want to get in a rhythm. You want to neutralize your opponent. You always want to go for another dink until you get a high ball. The whole game of pickleball basically is you eventually get up to kitchen, your opponent gets up to kitchen. You dink, you dink, you dink, you dink, you dink, you dink, you dink. You keep on dinking for 15, 20 minutes. Someone pops it up, you smash it down, and you win the point. Now, again, the higher level you go, or the lower level you are, you might not even get up to the kitchen, but the higher level you get, the more offensive shots that players hit, the more the professional player, the higher level player is going to be able to get that ball back. But for the most part, whoever pops the ball up first at the kitchen is going to lose the point. So what does that mean? Number one, that means what? Focus on going for another shot. Have that mindset that you could dink for 10, 15, 20, 100 dinks until your opponent pops the ball up in the air. When you're dinking, you th should think about one thing, and that is patience. That is patience, thinking that you can be there forever. Think, when you hit, go on an ice bath, at least for me, I can go on ice baths, and they're amazing. I can't do fast. I tried to do a fast. Absolutely sucked at 24 hours. Felt so hungry. I couldn't do it. However, for the ice bath, I can go on the ice bath myself. I can be in the ice bath 39, 38, 37 degrees, and I can be there for 15, 20 minutes. I can be there for as long as possible. It's easy for me. And the reason why is because when I sit in this ice bath, I think I can be here forever. I tell myself, I can be here forever. I feel the sun shining at me. I pretend it's hot. I can be here forever. When you are dinking, I want you to think that you can be there forever, kind of just like I described in the ice bath analogy. The reason why is you want to think, again, you're going to go forever until what? Until you see a high ball and then you go down. So keep the ball low. Get the ball over net until your opponent gives you a high ball opportunity and then go for your shot. If it's not a high ball, what are you going to do? You're in the ice bath. You're going to be there forever, and you're going to keep on going until your opponent gives that ball. The great tip is to make sure that you always try to hit one more ball than your opponent. Once again, when you're up at the kitchen, I want you to have that mentality that you're going to hit one more dink than your opponent up at the kitchen. You're going to go for one more extra ball, and they're going to eventually pop the ball up, and they're going to smash it down. The next thing I can explain is being efficient with your movement. Not only you want to be efficient with your body, but you want to make sure that you limit the amount of steps. There are basically three different types of movements that you can do while you're up at the kitchen. Number one, making sure that if the ball is to you, you just go here. Number two, what's going to happen? If the ball's out wide, you're going to do a side lunge. And if the ball is short and angled, you're going to do a forward lunge. Once again, when I dink, I'm either staying here and dinking, I'm doing a side lunge, I'm doing a side lunge, or if the ball's short, I'm gonna move up, do a forward lunge for the forehand, or move up and do a backward lunge. Now notice, out of all those different types of movement, how many steps did I take maximum? The maximum number of steps that I took was one step. Now, what does that mean? Some players, they're here, right? They're going here, they're in the forehand, they're going here, backhand, okay? If you take 1,500 steps, if you watch this video, you're not just gonna go to one step, but what you can do is try to limit the amount of steps that you take. So if you take 15, take 13, if you take 13, take 12, 12, take nine, you get what I'm saying. Another thing that's gonna help you a ton with that is making sure that my hips are always facing forward. The moment that I turn my hips to the side, or the moment that everything goes haywire. And what I mean by that is players, the number one characteristic that they take or that they all have when they're taking too much movement up at the kitchen is that they're turning their bodies. When I turn my body, it's going to force myself to take a couple of steps. By keeping your body facing forward, making sure your hips are always facing forward, it's going to help you a ton up at the kitchen. Now, it's easier said than done, but a great way if you're a visual learner, again, is pretend that there is a wall in front of you and a wall behind you. So there's one wall we went over before, earlier in the video, in front with our paddle, right? We're limiting our paddle take back. But now, there's another wall between 
my chest and between my back. So what does that mean? When I move, I'm going to be moving like this all the time. I can't go backwards, I can't go forwards. I'm going to be staying right at the kitchen. If you can visualize that there's a wall, it's going to eliminate the amount of steps that you're going to take and it's going to give you the proper footwork movement. Now clearly, I get it, when the ball's short, you're going to have to take a step across your body. That is perfectly fine. Now, the next thing that you can do, okay? The lower that you get, the better you are going to be. Once again, the lower that you get, the better you are going to be, and the more consistency that you will have, and it's as easy as one, two, three. Make sure to follow my wrapping channel. Just kidding. But I want you to think, if you're six feet tall, I want you to be five feet tall. If you're five feet tall, I want you to be four feet tall. I want you to be a foot less than you actually are on court. The reason why, by being grounded, think, if I'm straight like this, if I'm standing up straight, standing up tall, my feet are narrow, okay? Someone pushes me, I'll fall right over. By being narrow, it's going to help you be off balance. Being narrow and tall is going to be a great recipe for being off balance and too much excess movement. If I am wide stance, I'm dropping my center of gravity getting into my legs. My legs are super sore. I did a 530 workout class. However, if I'm like this, if you came to push me, I wouldn't move right now. I wouldn't move. If I'm here and I'm grounded in my legs and you came to move me, I wouldn't move. By being grounded in my legs, dropping my center of gravity, having a wide stance, that's going to ensure that I'm going to limit the amount of movement that I'm going to take and it's going to keep me more balanced and I'm not going to fall out of my shot. That is huge. So if you want to instantly improve your dink, make sure you drop your center of gravity. If you're a legal midget, you're like four feet, you're going to be three feet. If you're 12 feet, you're going to be 11 feet and you will instantly improve your dinks. Now we talked about body positioning. Now we're going to be talking about paddle positioning. I want you to think too many players where they go wrong, and if you do this, or if you don't already think about this, it's going to instantly improve your game. Players, they keep their paddle low and close to their body. They're going to make contact close to their body. If you keep your paddle up and away from your body, now you're going to make contact up and away from our body. Where did we say when we started this video, where do you want to make contact? You want to make sure that you make contact out in front and away from your body. So again, if you make contact out in front and away from your body, or if you start out in front, it's going to help you be out in front, okay? So make sure that your ready position is with your paddle up and out in front. Once again, my paddle is out in front and away from my body on my ready position, so now I can be. Too many players, again, the closer you up are, when you're dinking, you have less time to work with. They start with their paddle down, takes so long to go to here, you're gonna end up getting jammed, or if your paddle's close to your body and it's up, and then the ball comes and they have to go out. <coughs> Again, you don't have time if your paddle's down going, or if your paddle's close going out here. If you start here, it's going to make you way more efficient. So every single time, make sure your paddle's up. Now, once you're done, you need to start where you finish and finish where you start. Once again, if you want to hit a good dink, you need to start where you finish and you need to finish where you start. And what I mean by that is you need to make sure that once I'm done, my players, they might start here, right? But then they go for the ball, they dink, and then they go down here. Notice, every single time that I dink, I always end up back to the same position that I started. Once again, if you want to hit an amazing shot in pickleball, you need to always end up in the same position that you started. So notice, I start here, but now after I'm done with my shot, I end here. After I'm done with my shot, I end here. Now why? If someone speeds the ball up at me, I can hit a volley, but also I want to be here so I can always get ready for the next ball. So notice, here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to do this. Go out and dick, right? I want you to go here, right? Every ball, I'm gonna go here, boom. I'm gonna go here, boom. I'm gonna go here, boom. Every single time I'm here. Now notice what I'm doing with my opposite hand. And if you struggle with this, this is the drill. This is the exercise for you. All it does is clapping hands. Notice, if you can get your non-dominant hand to touch your paddle after you're done, it's going to ensure that you're in the proper starting position. So I love to use this drill, especially with my beginner intermediate players, because again, if you touch your opposite hand, you get in the habit of touching your opposite hand, it's going to ensure that you are in the proper ready position. So always make sure again, you touch your opposite hand out in front, and that's going to help you again, make sure that you are always in the proper position when you hit. Now, Let's talk about, we're in the proper ready position, but let's talk about the proper 
paddle position. I want you to think whatever goes up must go down, especially with our weighted tip. A great way to ensure that our paddle's always in the proper position is I wanna make sure that my paddle tip is pointing up. My paddle tip's not pointing down when I'm in my ready position. My paddle tip's not pointing to the side when I'm in ready position. My paddle tip's not pointing vertical when I'm in ready position. It's pointing up and away. By having it up and away, that's going to allow you to hit a wide variety of shots. So when you're dinking again, you wanna make sure that you're ready position or when you're up at the kitchen with your paddle away from your body and then paddle tip pointing up, not straight up, but diagonally up. That's going to ensure that you hit a better shot. I'm telling you, if you can be in this proper position by pointing it up when you, it'll bring it down, that'll be so much better off. Now, another thing that you can do is for the forehand, I want you to think about your palm. When I hit my forehand, I'm gonna take the paddle away right now, watch when I hit my dink. My fingertips are down, my palm is always facing forward. Again, when I hit my forehand dink, my palm is always facing forward. When I hit my backhand dink, my knuckles are always facing forward, okay? So, when I go for my forehand dink, I wanna think palms always forward, okay? palms always forward. When I go for my backhand dink, I go here, knuckles are always forward. Knuckles are always forward. If you can think palm forward and knuckles forward, it'll orient your shot properly. The reason why a lot of players can't dink, they can't dink a pickleball, is because they're always turning their wrist. They're moving their wrist, they're doing all this crazy stuff. No, we need to keep it simple, efficient, compact, and concise. How do we do that? Making sure, again, our palm is always forward or our knuckles are always forward. If you can use these types of tips when you are up at the kitchen, you will instantly improve your dink. Now, I understand everyone's at different levels, everyone's at different ages, everyone's at different athletic abilities, comprehension levels, everything like that. However, I gave you a variety assortment of tips, okay? Different tips work for different people, not one size fits all. Judy on here watching, Judy, good old Judy, you might think the palm forward is the best thing since sliced bread. But Nancy, you might absolutely hate it, Nancy. And Karen, you might think, all these tips are so bad except for that one tip, and what is that? Keeping the paddle out in front and upward. What I'm trying to say is different tips, regardless or depending upon who you are, are gonna work for different people. So I encourage every single one of you to try all these assortments of tips and to see the best one that works for you. I hope a couple are gonna work for you. I gave you probably like 30 tips. This video's probably been over 30 minutes. However, one, two, five, 10 are gonna work for you. And again, five, they aren't gonna work for you. But my goal is for you to go out and court, try all these tips, see what happens. If any of these tips really helped you, please let me know in the comments below. Let me know which tips helped you. If you guys have any other tips, I would love to hear from you. Share with the community and just see. My one goal is make sure that you always do the tips three times, give it three shots for your body to comprehend before you throw it out and pick the next tip. Now, if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know in the comments below. Have a good one, happy hitting, and I will see you guys next time on court.